Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Derek. Definitely glad you're here. And yes, I am wearing the same blue shirt that I wore in the last video. I know I, I get I guess comments like that all the time. First, it's red shirts, and a, and yes, there is a water droplets on my shirt, so it kind of looks like I have a stain. Yeah, I'm kind of dingy sometimes. But this isn't a sweetie video. This I may mention sweetie in this video. But this is not a sweetie video. This is something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more wholesome and a little bit more close to my heart than that. Now I know most of my videos I do it has nothing to do with sweetie or delete laws. Um, they don't get nearly as many many views, mainly because we all like train wrecks, right? We all like that. We we like to watch drama. We like train wrecks. We we just like to see, we just like to see things. But, but, that kind of gives me a good segue into what I'm wanting to talk about. Now, whenever I first started making YouTube videos, this was a long time ago, maybe six, seven years ago, actually maybe 10. I think 10 years ago or 11 years ago was when I posted like goofy things, uh, nothing like I do now, which most of my stuff is still goofy, don't get me wrong. But um, around seven, eight years ago, I think, I started actually making YouTube videos. And you can go back and look at those. Prior to that, I was streaming uh, on Twitch. And that was fun. That was fun. That was really fun. Uh, back early Twitch days was pretty cool. I mean, of course, you had your booby streamers. and your, But there, there wasn't any hot tub metas or anything like that. It was mainly just video games. Mainly. That's basically what it was. This was before just chatting and... Uh, the people just walking around uh, an IRL streams. Um, and I had a lot of fun. I had actually a pretty decent little audience. Uh, it was small, but, you know, it was fun. Um, and one of the two people that got me into streaming and making videos was there was a guy, there was a user, which he doesn't make, he doesn't stream anymore, hasn't streamed in years, and he was called Mundy, Muddy Unders. And he was a really, really cool guy. He gave me a lot of pointers, and I learned a lot from him. Uh, but he ended up stopping uh, the streams um, to work on things. He, I guess he got married and he had a job and everything. So those things take um, president over streams and making YouTube content. The other person that got me into YouTube videos was Boogie2988. Now, the reason why I like Boogie, and I, there for a while, I was, you know, I, I was a super fan. It was kind of weird, like... I just like talking about Boog talking to Boogie, and you know, I, I, I've had a conversation with him uh, on Twitter and stuff like that. But um, he got me into making YouTube videos just from his story. Um, it, it wasn't very like his story was pretty dark, and you know, I've had dark moments in my life. Um, nothing that bad, but I've had some pretty rough times, and we've talked about these um, in detail, which we'll. we'll We'll kind of bring it up to do some a cliff note version of that. But one of the things that I have kind of added to my YouTube videos for the longest time is a theme of depression, anxiety. And why I do that is I want this channel to be sort of an outlet for people that suffer from these things. You can look at me and be like, hey, I, I go through the same things. And I kind of want this to be like uh, just just something where you guys can do. Like you can tell me your story and I'll tell you my story. And it's long. But yeah, I, I kind of want to help you guys out mostly. Um, because what I have found out through the years and I'm still finding out, I'm still stubborn. Uh, you can ask my family and my fiance. I am stubborn as they come. I don't like to ask for help. Um, I don't. I don't like it. And I've had embarrassing things where I've had to ask for help. And that would maybe financially. And that was terrible. Terrible. And, you know, I lost nearly everything I owned. Uh, I had a nice car. had a nice house that uh, I was living in. Um, you know, I went through a breakup of seven years. Um, you know, I had a friend that committed suicide. He was my best friend and, you know, my health issues got worse because I didn't take care of myself. You know, a lot of people on here, like 
Sweetie's Brigade calls me fat, which you know, I know, I know this. Uh, I'm working on it, trying to. Doesn't bother me if you call me fat though. <laughs> if if you're using that insult, you're you. It's too easy, guys. Too easy. Does not affect me. But anyways, when I talk about depression. I don't talk about, and you could kind of include this because it's still depressing the way you see it. There's clinical depression and then there's depression. And a lot of people don't know the difference. When I say regular old fashioned depression, I mean stuff like, oh, I, you know, my dog died my girlfriend broke up with me. I lost my job, uh, stuff like that. You, you feel down, you feel down and you're, you become depressed. And that's a normal thing in life. In life, you're going to have many obstacles where something bad happens, right? You know, you'll lose somebody um, you love, and it hurts. It hurts. And sometimes it lingers on to you. And it actually plays into clinical depression. Now, it could be the trigger. But sometimes, whenever you get diagnosed with purely clinical depression, which in my case, I have severe bipolar depression. And I got um, diagnosed with that probably six, seven years ago, maybe. And, you know, I've I've been back and forth. Um, I've had multiple suicide attempts. I think four, if I remember correctly. Um, one that I ended up in the ICU. Um, I had to, I swallowed 30, uh, 30 of my blood pressure meds. And I immediately after I'd done it, I called 911 because I knew I fucked up. I was like, why did I do this? And they came, got me, uh, I was in the ambulance, gave me activated charcoal and, you know, you drink that and then you vomit. It makes me kind of sick just thinking about the taste of it. It's one of those things you'll never forget. This whole experience will do. So activated charcoal, I puked up some of them. So they rushed me to the hospital and they force a hose down my nose and to my stomach, which the first time I did it was kind of funny. It went down through my nose and out of my mouth and I was gagging. So I grabbed a hold of the uh, tube while it's like right, right into my nose and my mouth. And they finally let go and they tried it again. And they finally got it because they said, hey, if we don't do this, you're going to die. I'm like, seriously, you're, you're going to die if you don't want to do this. So they finally got it in. I, I finally took it like a man. Um, you know, that was that was interesting. So they sucked out like I think twelve pills. Um, which you know, I still had a couple more left in there, but it they, they put me in the ICU uh to kind of watch me there. So there was that. Um, of course, there was another one where I was going to run my car into a tree and I told them about it and they sent me to, um, they put me in the hospital. Then my brother on another one, he found me in a room with a knife. Uh, I actually walked up to my grandpa and grandma's grave and I had the knife with me and I couldn't make up my mind. And just, just other things that's happened. Like I can't have a gun. I, I could probably get a gun. But I refused to get a gun. I used to have a gun. I had a Walther PPK. Main reason I bought it because I loved 007, and that's why he carried. Um, and I got it. And I had to sell it. I had to sell it. I'm glad I did because I, I probably won't be, wouldn't be here, honestly, if I still had that gun. So when I say clinical depression, this is something you wake up every day every waking hour this causes things causes hunger you can either eat a lot because you're like hey man i'm depressed so i want to eat that's my outlet that was, makes me feel good and you know I, I could say that's probably part of me you know you, you end up doing drugs alcoholism a lot of things can stem from it a lot of it it's not just one single thing it's not just hey i'm depressed you feel it in your whole body um, it's like a nightmare. You just can't wake up from it. And you think every day, you're like, man, tomorrow will get better. Sometimes it does. You can actually be have one of the greatest moments of your life. You might be happy for a moment. But with clinical depression or severe type, 
you you probably won't enjoy it. Like you still feel that deep pain. You wake up and you're like, I don't want to be alive today. And you, you you think that all the time. It's it's just a normal thing. And whenever I say things about Sweetie being mentally unfit, it's true. He's got problems. I don't know what they are. I, I think it's drug related. That's just me. But whenever we talk about you know mental stuff, he he kind of comes up there. We can actually kind of tie that to him. But anyways, um, so I I take tons of medicine. If you, if you want to see, that's that's at nighttime. There's probably ten pills there, right in here. Uh, let me see. Uh, that's an empty one. Why is there an empty one? Is that Monday? Okay, today is Monday. Oh, I thought today was Sunday. But there's probably ten pills in each one of those, and. So on, so on. I, I have pro I, I can't sleep at night unless I take this medicine. If I don't take it, I stay up. I'm literally up. My mind is constantly racing. So the only way I can go to sleep is with medication. Now, I had problems in the past with alcoholism. Um, alcoholism runs kind of deep in my family. Um, you know, there's a lot of alcoholics and there's a lot of depression. A lot of heart disease and a lot of stuff like that. And these last few years has been really crazy for me. Um, it was all up until, and I still have problems today. It was up until I met Monty. She's she's my fiance. That I found like things are better. Like I I feel like things are better. Uh, she's helped me quite a bit, and you know my family is a support system. The most important thing when you're going through depression is having a support system. Whether that be your friends or family or just some stranger that you met on the street. A support system helps quite a bit. Now, I had a friend. He was my best friend. Um, I was away. I, I wasn't able to give him, you know, any support. And, you know, in my mind, I think, you know, maybe if I was there and not in Mansfield or back home dealing with my own demons, and I could have helped him, you'd still be alive today. And I do blame myself a lot on that. And that's the thing about depression. Things that you may not have any control of, it goes to your head that, what could I have done differently? Oh man, I maybe, maybe it was me. And you think that kind of stuff. And, and, and it's kind of hard, honestly, it's kind of hard. And small things trigger you. Um, that's that's one thing too. I don't like to fight. I don't. I don't like to like whenever you know we get in an argument or something. I literally just drop everything. Like I, I can't operate. I know a lot of people are like, hey, well, "That's kind of stupid." No, it's true. I mean, I I just can't can't function. You know, I I watch back in the day my parents. It's constantly fighting. My my dad was abusive. Hey, we just gotta just gotta subscribe. <laughs> I should have turned the uh, notifications off there. But anyways, that's funny. That's funny. Like I'm 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 trying to get used to seeing those. Like, <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I watched my parents uh, in a really bad bad marriage. It was a bad divorce. Uh, my dad was, and I don't want to say this. There was some abuse. Um, he was alcoholic, um, and it got bad. I'm not going to bring too much into it, but it was pretty bad. There was a lot of fighting, um, and it was awful. You know, my mom is one of my best friends. I love my mom to death. And, you know, I love my dad. Um, me and him has had some problems in the past. Um, and a lot of people do. A lot of people, fam fam family is hard. Family is really hard. But I love my mom my mom, she's, she's amazing, amazing person. And she's got, she, she's had, she has to deal with depression. She has. And, you know, I, I've, I've made her, you know, I, I've probably made her mind race. I, I've probably nearly gave her a heart attack many times because of the way I am. Um, you know, I'm depressed and, you know, I think I don't want to be here tomorrow. I, and, you know, Monty sees that, uh, my friends see that, and I don't talk to a lot of my friends, um, and that's my fault, 
And I'll take full responsibility. I, I have a lot of friends, but I just don't talk to anybody. I stay to myself. Usually when, when I get home from work, I'll tell you how my day is. I get home, I'll eat something, I'll sit there for a minute on my computer, and I go to bed. And I go to bed early. I, I get up early, but I, I go to bed really early. And anyways, I don't do anything. I don't talk to anybody. Now, lately, I've been talking to some more friends, but I never go see them. Um, and I just stay to myself. You know, I, that's that's a sucky thing because my friends don't deserve that, right? Friends and family doesn't deserve you just ignoring them and just not giving them any type of attention. And that's my fault. That's my fault. And you know, like I said, depression does that to you. And the best way I've come around it anymore is been trying to open myself up. And you probably have the same problem. You probably mean you eye to eye talking right now. Maybe this is relating to you. Maybe this is something um, that you're going through right now. And, you know, you need somebody relatable to talk to. Maybe you don't talk to your friends. Maybe you're shut in just like me. You know, I, there's a lot of things that I love to do. I love gaming. I don't play games as much as I used to. I don't have that urge. Like, I feel like uh, the stuff that I love is just a thing that I don't care about anymore. Which I love gaming. I love gaming, guys. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big gamer. A lot of my tattoos are gaming related. I'm big into Pokemon. I'm big into movies. You know, I'm not big into comic books. Never... I, I tried comics, but nah. But Pokemon, Pokemon, and video games is my big. That's my thing. Um, and Lord of the Rings, Star Wars. I know I'm a nerd. I get it. I get. It. Let me tell you this: there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. And you could be a nerd for many different things. It doesn't just have to be. Hey, you like Star Wars? You're a nerd. You can be a football nerd. You could be a. Uh, lumberjack nerd i i don't know you can be a nerd for everything nerd always had a bad stigma attached to it the girls did not like the nerds now you see you know gamers and stuff making millions of dollars and you know the the term nerd has a higher um connotation to it now it's 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 something people will actually want to do like and that's cool. I mean, the stereotypes are still there. Um, you know, you have your basement dwelling nerds and you have your, we used to call ourselves the American Eagle of nerds, um, which was, was just kind of fun. Um, but I feel bad sometimes that, you know, I don't give the attention to things that mean something to me. Um, I, I just lay there. I go to bed. I just lay there. And it's awful. Now, I used to be a musician, used to play uh, bass guitar for some punk bands, and that was really fun. I, I miss playing shows. I really do. It does one of those things I really enjoy doing. Um, you know, I have a bass guitar again. Um, it's funny, if you go back on my channel, you can actually find some of my, or some of the stuff I was into when, when I was with the Down Around 3, or we had a band called Ground Below in high school. It's just little punk stuff. Um, you can go back, it's pretty far back. Uh, I think it's in the Let's Talk uh, playlist somewhere in there, or skits. I, I don't know. It's it's there. If you guys ever wanted to see it, you also see a skinny me, which is weird. I know, I know. I was skinny before. I was still a big guy, but I was skinnier than I am now. But yeah, uh, depression is it's shitty, man. It's shitty. You know, I I see. I, I was seeing counselors very regularly. I was seeing a uh, psychiatrist. Well, he wasn't quite psychiatrist. He was a, I guess he was a nurse practitioner that uh, was over psych. I guess I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. You know, and I take all the medicine. Like I, I take a ton of medicine. You guys have seen that. Uh, some of it helps. Some of it don't. There's times like I just started back uh, taking another medicine again, but I stopped because depression was getting worse you know you know I, I i've been getting stressed out quite a bit and one of the things that's really made me happy lately you know you know monty uh she's been my rock um but um 
seeing the YouTube channel explode. Now, Monty is way more important than the YouTube channel. I'm just going to let you know that now. She's, she's, she's amazing to me. She treats me good. She treats me great, like a king. I've never been treated like that from a girl, ever. I could not ask for a better person to spend the rest of my life with. And anyways, it's been crazy to see the YouTube channel starting to take off a little bit. Now, I don't know how much longer I'll have. May I, I know right now some of our videos are getting almost 2,000 uh, views. And we're seeing the, the subscriber number just go up and up and up, which is great. And it's actually, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited when I make the next video. And I know I've been doing the, the sweetie stuff to death, but like I said before, it's it's pretty damn easy. It's pretty damn easy. The content writes itself. It really does. And a lot of a lot of people that's covering this, you know, they'll tell you the same thing. The content literally writes itself. Um, we all again, we all like train wrecks. We all like to see high octane explosions, breakdowns, drama, and all kind of <laughs> accumulates into this big ball that you just want to bounce it, want to watch it bounce. And that's 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 been fun. That's been fun. Um and I know like I said, I know that, you know, maybe we'll slow down. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll get bigger. My my goal now is to hit five thousand followers, ten thousand followers, a million followers, which I, that's that's really grasping straws there. But you know, I have goals, but I don't want to set those goals because how I see things, I've always set myself, I, I used to set my goals super high. And when those things didn't happen, I got depressed. It made me feel worse. And I don't want to do that to this channel. I don't want to put that pressure on me. If it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's, it's It might not be meant to be, but I'm still going to make content. Um, I'm enjoying it. I took, a, I took a year off of... And again, I had stuff to do with my depression. I stopped streaming and uh, took a year off. Um, you know, I was doing Pokemon unboxings, which that got expensive. Um, I'd, I'd like to go back and do some of these occasionally. My big thing was the Japanese sets. That, that was my favorite. Um, but ultimately, what you have to do whenever you're dealing with depression, rather it be clinical depression or just straight up, hey, my girlfriend broke over me, I'm depressed. One thing you want to do is find something that's going to help you take your mind off things. I know it's hard to say. I know it's hard to think. I, I, I know that. Trust me. I know. But when you find something that you love to do, do it. Do it. Have fun. Break that cycle. Break that cycle. Break that cycle of getting up in the morning, not wanting to do anything Wishing you was gone. I, like I said, I still deal with that every morning. I, I, there's no off switch. There's no such thing as an off switch. But you can live with it. You can live with it. You can you can have fun. And I, you know, I want you guys that are watching. Again, this video may not get as many views as the other, but for the people that took the time to watch a 30 minute video about this and hear me yammer. Do something that helps you. Something that's going to make you happy. Don't do anything like alcohol and drugs. Don't do that. That makes things worse. That makes things worse. Talk to people. You know, I'm having a dialogue with you guys. Even though we're not up and close uh, to each other. I'm having a dialogue with you guys. And you're more than welcome in the comments that have that same di dialogue. And if you want, you can email me. Um, you know, I think my email is attached to my about page. Um, and I believe my Facebook group page is on there too. You can get me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, which I have all of. So if you guys want to check those out, you can actually click on the links on the YouTube channel to join those. I do TikTok every once in a while. Um, just goofy things mainly. I think we have like 400 uh, followers on there. Um, and we got Twitch. I, I am going to start streaming on Twitch again. But soon there'll be gaming streams. There'll be stuff like a Pokemon, um, other stuff. I, I, I you know, I, I, I do want to cover if, which we know it's not going to happen. But if Sweetie comes back, we will be covering uh, 
the fights, um, which, you know, a lot of people was looking forward to. But I want to do some interviews with, you know, some of the local PD, uh, veterans, uh, some of the other uh, awesome like people like Mass Hole, uh, Unclean Hands, uh, Uncle Artie, um, and those, you know, a lot of content creators. I, I do want to open myself up to other content creators. I never been able to be a part of a community that wants to work together like rather be just like a podcast or anything like it, it makes me really happy you know i'm scared part of me is terrified of that but part of me is like man here's your chance here's your chance this is your chance to um get out there um let people know who you are and like i said once once the sweetie stuff's over which i think it's going to be pretty soon uh, pretty soon, I think it's going to be over with. So, if you guys stay with me, okay? Stay with me. Give me a chance. Let's keep on growing this channel. Let's get bigger and bigger. We have giveaways we still need to do. I haven't done it because I'm poor. You know, we're we're working on a, um, you know, getting married, uh, getting us a place. You know, I've lived with my brother for a few years now. You know, I you know I had a rough time. Like I said, I, I was all over the place. I was in Illinois. Um, we got a house in Ashland and lost it because my health and her, you know, my ex. And then I went to Mansfield for a while and, you know, predominantly got, you know, I had my, one of my best friends pretty much saved my life uh, by, you know, coming up there and pulling me from that mess. And where do, where's my train of thought here? And it's another thing. Let me tell you this. Psych meds. Once you start on psych meds, I'm going to promise you there's a lot of memory loss. You can be in a conversation with somebody and forget exactly what you was talking about. Or you could have had something happen 10 years ago or 10 minutes ago. You will forget about it. You will. And I just lost my train of thought. And damn, I hate when it happens. I hate when it happens. But yeah, just open yourself up, guys. Do something you love. Um, doesn't matter what it is. Don't don't give a fuck what people say. You know, you know, we have people on here that likes to troll us. I don't give a shit what they say. They can say what they want. They're they're entitled to that. I mean, that's their opinions. They can say whatever they want. I'm not gonna stop you from saying it. As long as it's not completely vile. And you know what I'm talking about. Racism, misogynism, homophobia, all that stuff. We we don't want that. It's not what we're about here. We're here to have fun and just be a great community. I, and I enjoy all the support. Um, I really do. This is, the support's been overwhelming to me. And um, it couldn't have happened at a better time. Like I said, you know, we're getting ready to pay for it. That's, that's where I was at. Uh, we got to pay for a wedding. We got to pay for a down payment for uh a really nice apartment, uh, which we're working on that. It's been kind of hard for us. So we had uh, a few things that's just happened that you know, things you can't really control, but um, we're working on saving the money. I think it's like $2,500 or more. So, yeah, we got to have the, um, what is it? The damage deposit. Then you have the pet fee. Then you have the first month's rent and, uh, then you have the two, um, I think $65 each for just the application. And these are nice apartments, by the way. These are very nice, very nice. Um, but, you know, I have a great job. She's got a great job. Um, you know, I don't have benefits right now, so. And, you know, she's having some problems at work, too, but nothing, nothing too serious. But uh, we're working on that. Um and hopefully we can come up with the money for all that, and especially the wedding. Wedding's going to be in October. I'm going to be I'm going to be married. I'm going to have a Miss Barnhart. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? There's going to be a female Barnhart. I mean, technically there's still female Barnhart. You know what I'm saying, right? Am I saying right? There's going to be. I'm going to have somebody that's going to be next to me named Barnhart, and she's awesome. I'm just glad she's taking my name because my last name's kind of stupid. It is. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, let me know. Uh, tell me what you guys are thankful for. 
Um, if you want to build a dialogue, just let me know. Feel free to hit that subscribe button, follow button, and share these videos, and I'll see you soon.